Test, test, test. Yo. Test one, test two, test three. I'm testing this volume right now. Yeah, it was unavailable. What up, what up, what up? Trying to test this. All right, there we go. What's up? What up? What up? What up? I might need to move this chat off of here, man, because that's not working right here. So hold on. Let me take this off of here. Mm -mm -mm. No. Removing this chat box. There we go. Yo, what's good? What's good? Jerome is in the house. What's happening? Dubai Films. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? What up? What up? What y'all got? What y'all got? What's good? What's good? Danico Pruitt. What's that, Lions? Oh, what's good, man? What is good? Yo, tell me if the um tell me if the volume uh let me know if the uh the sound and everything is good coming through right now. So I tried to make sure the vo I tried to make sure the sound and everything was good, so we should be good there, you know. You gonna do a review on the mirrorless Canon camera. Um, I hope so. Volume is good. Alright, that's good to go. Good to know. Volume is good. Um, I really hope to do a, I really hope to do a um, um, review on the new Canon um, EOS R. Um, it's going to be pretty good, but you know that that Canon is only, from what I understand, it's only the the smaller version. They're coming out with actually another body that's actually supposed to be the pro version. So a lot of people's kind of putting their ducks all in one place right now because they think that's the only one. But from what I understand, they're about to come out with a pro version. Of the Canon um, EOS R, so it's gonna be pretty interesting to see. So, what's good? What's good? What's good, Charles? What's going on, Jerome? Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, sound is good there. San Antonio, Texas is in the house. The pro version is gonna be legit. Yo, we're gonna see if the pro version is gonna be legit, man, because you know the other version only has the one car slide and. A lot of people, you know, they're they're looking at this like, oh my God, it's horrible. But I don't know. I think that next version that's coming out is probably going to be probably a higher megapixel. Has going to have like a better dynamic range on it. Dual car slots, joystick. Um, I think that next mirrorless version that they come out with, um, I think it's gonna. Hope I'm hoping it's going to be something for Canon's sake. Because right now that um that EOS R is kind of yeah. So we're gonna have to see about that. Uh, tell us what you got the 85. Tell you about the 80, uh, the 105. Well, <clears throat> this is the 105, as you can see. Well, turn it sideways. Okay, there you go. Ah, uh, hold on. I take it off. Yo, the front element on this thing is crazy. So, here's the 105, man, um, the Sigma. So, after using it in two photo shoots back-to-back, -back, man, I'm telling you right now, this lens is by far the best portrait lens I have used. I, and I don't say that easily. Um, so, let me tell you, somebody just picked up the a7 III, it's good. All right, so let me tell you about the 105 that you, don't, that you probably don't know. 
This thing is, when I when they say this thing is sharp, this thing is really, really sharp. It is, it's sharp. Um, the 105, the 104, the 1.4 aperture is absolutely amazing. It, the low light um, that this thing can produce is stunning. Um, and the compression, separating your subject from the background with this thing is just crazy. And it's a 105, so the focal length is absolutely perfect. The focal length is, is like perfect. So, um, yeah, that's going to be crazy, man. Uh, I got the 24 to 70 G Master. Should I get the 70 to 200? Uh, 2.8 or the 8514 next to portraits? Um, I mean, you got the 24 to 70. As you guys, as you know, I'm not a really big fan of the 24 to 70. Um, because that focal length, and I tried to explain this to people, so I'm going to explain it while I'm YouTube right now. Here's the reason why you will never see me use a 16 to 35 or a 24 to 70. There are too many prime, le prime lenses within that focal length that is just better than the zoom lens. I would not, I can't see myself picking up a 24 to 70 over my 3514 or my 5518 or my 2414, anybody, anything like that. I would never use it. Uh, when I shot Canon, I had the 24 to 70 Tamron, it was great, 2.8. But I never used it because I shoot portraits. I can't, you're not going to pick up a zoom lens over your prime lens when you shoot portraits. You get a better aperture, better low light, sharper images. So I never got that 24 to 70. And for the price, listen, for the price of a 24 to 70 G Master, dude, you could get a 3514 Semyon. You can get the 5518. You can get the 8518 all for that price. Um, but you got it now, so my next one, I would tell you, every if you shoot Sony, I think everybody should have the 70 to 200 2.8. That that lens is just absolutely stunning. The compression, it's the best 70 to 200 that was ever made. Um, I love that lens. So 70 to 200 is going to be great. That's going to be kind of like your uh, the next portrait lenses you get. Um, so I wouldn't, as you know, I'm not a big fan of the 8514 either, G Master, because that's like a $1,700 lens. The 8518 is absolutely stunning. You see me do work with the 8518. I wouldn't get I wouldn't get the 8514. I really didn't. For people who are getting it, honestly, they're just kind of getting it for the name. So I really wouldn't get it. So um, D Mac, what's going on, man? How you doing? All right, what's up? I'm gonna scroll up here and see if I can get some of these questions real quick. Uh, I love your videos. Dude. Too heavy, unfortunately. I'd rather go with the 3135. So. Uh, when, let me see here. When will you be making a Mac edit to Final Cut? I'm thinking about going Final Cut. Hey, Ben, chill out, bro. <laughs> you know that. Uh, love my 51 too. Will you ever sell any of your lenses gear? I'm thinking about it. I'll let you know that here in a second. Uh, Brandon, I need to come to Atlanta. I was almost going to Atlanta, man. Atlanta almost won the challenge, but now I'm going to uh, New Jersey. So, 7200. So, i answer a few of these questions. So let's tackle this 135 versus 105. I know a lot of you guys came here to talk about this. So before anybody else tells you, I'm going to tell you the biggest difference between the 135.18 and the 105.14. Okay. So as you know, I had the 135.18. If you look at my earlier videos, I used to use when I shot with the 5D Mark IV with Canon, um, the Sigma Art 135.18 was a lens that I use a lot. The 135.18 versus the 105.14. I'm going to tell you right now. I would I would get the 105 over the 135. Here is why. 135 focal length is what what the most important thing is. That is a big distance. All right. Trying to compress my subject with the 105 to try to get either a head shot, a three quarter shot, or a full body shot. I'm already at a decent distance, but not too far away, but not close. 135 focal length is going to put you, you got to remember, that's 30. That's <laughs> that's 30 millimeters. That is pretty big. Um, that's going to put you at a distance from your, from your subject if you've never used the 135. The problem with that is, is that you're locked in at 135. You can't go anywhere to get that, to get that picture that you need. So you're going to have to move your feet. You can't really go forward and you can't really go back because you're going to run out of your focal length. So I don't really recommend getting the 135 because it's different from it's different 
when you're locked in at 135. That's what makes the 70 to 200 really, really good because you can go to 200 millimeters and compress the background. But if you want to get closer, it's a telephoto lens so you can move forward and you're not locked in at 70 or 200. So you're versatile. 135 is going to lock you in and you're not going to want to shoot at that distance all the time. And you need to and you're going to have to need the space for it. So you got to think about these things when you're thinking about the 135 or the 105. Um, and it's, you know, it's a few stops of light. I mean, also with the 105 and it's a perfect focal length. So you guys got to remember that when you're deciding between the 135 and 105. My biggest thing is the focal length. You're not going to you're not going to want to be locked in at 135 all the time. I'm telling you right now, I used it for a very long time. So take it from me. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's see here, Mason. Da, 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 you know, so uh, somebody had a question. So D Rocks 1000 RR, he has a set question. Should I get the 70 to 200 F4? Um, I'm going to tell you, it depends on your budget. If you can save up more money and get the 70 to 200 2.8, I highly recommend you get the 2.8. If you can't and you want the 70 to 200, then get the F4. But for the compression and what the G Master version can do. I would highly recommend you save your pennies and go for that 70 to 200 28, all right? Because the F4, you're not going to you're not going to want to shoot at that F4 a lot. I'm telling you right now. So uh, let me see what up. Uh, Ken Harrell, what's going on, man? Thanks for the advice on those lenses you got me. Uh, right on, appreciate it, man. Uh, what about Norfolk Photo Walk? Uh, we're going to try to get another photo walk at the end of September or early October, man. So the last one, we kind of got rained out, and you know we're going through tornado, you know, hurricane season right now, so it is what it is. Um, I picked up the 7200 because I bought it, used two months old, 1600, couldn't pass it up. That's good, man. That's not a bad deal. Um, would you use the 7200 for portraits? Absolutely. Um, I use my 70 to 200 for portraits a lot. I love it. But um, right now, I am breaking this thing in right now, so... Um, but yeah, I love my 70 to 200. I use it for a lot of studio work in my studio, so I do use it a lot. Um, when you come to San Antonio, I would love to come to San, San Antonio, Texas. I would like to go to Texas, period. Um, but I don't know, man. We'll have to see. Uh, let me see here. What else you got? Can you use HSS at F4? I didn't think you. Yeah, absolutely. High speed sync doesn't the high speed sync doesn't have to have anything to do with the aperture of your lens, and it's not what that's it is. High speed sync is being able to use um, flash above your camera's um, your your camera's fla um, standard flash sync speed. That's what it is. So normally our flat our, our our camera flash sync speeds are like anywhere from like one sixty of a second to up to two fiftieth of a second. High speed sync just allows you to use flash above your camera's um, Flash sync speed. That's all it is. That has nothing to do with the aperture of the lens. Um, let's see what it is. What are your thoughts on the Tamron 28 to 75 for video? Um, like I said before, I'm not a fan of the 24 to 70, 28 to 75. Um, I do know that uh, the new Tamron 28 to 75. I think it's a pretty good lens. Uh, but is it something that I will use? I'm not gonna use it. Um, even for video, I would rather use a prime lens, probably like. Like I'm shooting right now, my 16 millimeter f1.4 from Sigma, that's my main go-to video lens. I use that lens for everything. If I need to get closer, I'll probably switch to my 35 millimeter 1.4, but my 16 is perfect. Um, and it's a crop sensor, so there it is. Uh, let me see. I'm hey, I'm pushing them out. Y'all got to keep bringing them. I'm pushing them out. So y'all got me here for all these questions, so I got you. Let's do it. All right, so what else? I love the 7200 F4 for automotive photography, though. You are not usually going to shoot below that anyway, automotive. So, yes, the reason for that is, is because when you're shooting cars, you want to try to get everything in focus. So, shooting at 2.8, um, you know, that's, that's when you're trying to really get that shallow depth of field. But if you're shooting automotive, like cars and things like that, you're gonna even if I shot even if I had a 70 to two uh 7200 2.8, I would stop it down so I can bring everything in focus so I can get a really much sharper image. So if that's what you're using it for, then the 70 to 200 f4 works, right? Makes sense. Um, because you want to stop it down and bring everything in focus and get a nice, really sharper image. So 
F4 works for you then. That makes sense. Boom. What y'all got? Come on. We knocking them out the park. What else y'all got? Kim. Hey, why do you call her Kim Fields? She is not Kim Fields, D. All right. She does not look like Kim Fields. All right. Let's see what it is. I'm thinking of switching from Canon to Sony. What would be my first lens to get? It depends on what you shoot. So type in the comments what you actually shoot, and then we can go from there. Also, I hope you guys are getting in on September's um, on location challenge. We're going to talk about that in a second also. Uh, let's see here. What else you got? Uh, for portraits, 85. Save you some money. Switch over to Sony, get the 85 millimeter 1.8. That's what I guarantee you. That's what I suggest you do. 85 1.8 until you're able to save up more money. The 85 1.8 is like $500, $550. Get the 85 1.8 and go shoot. Have fun. Boom. Go. That's all you got to do. Uh, got to get full car and focus. Yep, you got that right. We all see, we already on point. That's how we do. All right, MacBook Pro or Dell XPS? Dell XPS all day. I am a Windows person. I do not use a Mac. Um, although Macs are great, but as far as editing and as far as user friendly go, Dell XPS all day. Absolutely. Uh, let me see what else you got. Sam, I've been trying to get him. <laughs> you ain't been trying to get me to Houston, man. I told you. I'm going to New Jersey, man. So hopefully sometime this year, I'm going to try to get out there, man. I am. I'm not making no promises. But I'm going to get to Houston, all right? I'm going to try my best. Um, is a 70 to 200 too long for portraits on my on the D500? Um, I can't remember, but I think the D500 is a crop sensor, right? It's not a full frame. Uh, let me know. I can't remember. I don't really shoot too much Nikon, but I got an idea. Uh, D-Mac, he will be hell the time. So awesome, bro. Um, I switched from the D7200 to the A73. Congratulations, man. Welcome to Sony, bro. Uh, I have the 70 to 200 2.8. Should I sell it or use an adapter for Sony, which will work good? A7300. Do you, the 70 to 200, is it a G Master or is it the Nikon version? Um, when you switched over to Sony, do you actually have like native Sony glass? I don't know. You didn't, you didn't tell me that. Uh, let me see. What else you got? Best macro lens for the A7R3. The best macro lens on the planet. I should I should go over there and get it, but I ain't gonna get it. The 90 millimeter 2.8 macro. If you guys know, what is Sony's sharpest lens in the bag? It is the 90 millimeter 2.8 G. I love that macro lens, and it is by far the best macro lens I've ever used, and it is the sharpest. It's actually the sharpest lens on DxO Mark. Behind, uh, in front of the 55 millimeter 1.8. If you guys didn't know that, according to DxO Mark, the 90 millimeter 2.8 macro is the sharpest lens by Sony. Second is the 55 millimeter 1.8 Zeiss. Bam! Let's go. Hey, hey. All right, what else y'all got? I'm not. Hey, I'm knocking them out the park. What y'all bringing? All right, let's see here. When will you be uploading a studio shoot you did a while ago? I did not record that studio shoot. I should have. I am sorry. I didn't get it. However, I'm going to go and let you guys in on a little secret. This week coming up, I have a studio shoot with two models in the studio. That's all I'm going to tell you. So, uh, let's see here. What else you got? I got a new crib and he can stay. Oh, whatever. Am I attending WPPI? I am going to try to attend WPPI next year. I haven't been yet due to um, obligations, work obligations, but I am planning to go to WPPI next year. If you guys don't know, you heard it from me first. I hope to see you guys there. It's going to be my first time really going because I haven't been able to go. WPPI next year. Uh, let me see here. I have the A7 III for majority of portrait work, but I do a lot of beauty work also. And I have the A7R2 for that. I want to sell my A7R2 and grab some lenses. You think a huge difference in in what? In data? I don't know what that last word is, but I have the A7R2. That's actually what I'm recording you on right now. I have two A7R2s and I have my A7 III. A lot of people ask me, why don't you upgrade to the A7R3? 
I'm gonna tell you exactly why I did not upgrade to the A7R 3 and why the A7R 2 for the price right now is one of the best buys that you can get. The A7R 2 and the A7R 3 are both 42 megapixel sensor cameras, okay? Now, a lot of people say, oh, I'm glad the A7R 3 came out. What were the upgrades from the A7R 2 to the A7R 3? 10 frames a second, joystick, dual car slot, the focusing, we know about the focusing, and better battery life. Those things, pretty much. Those are, those are that's it. The same sensor, I, I, now Sony sent me the A7R 3. I took pictures on the A7R 2 and the A7R 3. The pictures are identical. The pictures are identical. It uses the same exact sensor. So there was no upgrades in that. You just, the focusing was faster, 10 frames a second, um, and things like that. Now, do I need 10 frames a second? Absolutely not. You guys have to ask yourself these questions. Don't start buying gear just because everybody tells you to buy them. Listen, do you shoot fast stuff all the time? Absolutely not. I do portraits. I mean, I might do like a little hair flip or something like that, but the A7R 2 can still do it. Do I need a better battery life? No, I don't care. I have plenty of batteries on my A7R 2. It doesn't bother me. Do I need dual car slots? No, I don't. I'm good with one car slot. I even use my A7R 2 in weddings. I don't need dual car slots. Who cares? Do I need a joystick? No, I don't need a joystick. Uh, I had the 5D Mark IV that I had the joystick, my A7 3 minutes. I don't care about the joystick. I don't care about touch screen. I don't care about touch focus. If you can deal with all of that, deal with that, all of that, you don't need the A7R 3. The A7R 2 is perfect and it's still a beast camera. It's like when they came out with the A7R 3, people forgot that we used the A7R 2. It was like, it was like the golden the golden full frame camera for a long time. Jason Lanier, everybody's using the A7R 2 It was like the cream of the crop. And then when the A7R 3 came out, it was like, oh no, the A7R 2 sucks. What? No, it don't. It's still one of the best cameras. And now for sale, you can find an A7R 2 for like $1,400. I saw like two on Craigslist and offer up for like $1,400 and $1,500. Come on, man. No, no. That's why I did not upgrade to the A7R 3 I don't care about that little stuff. And it's still an amazing camera. It shoots 4K and I'm using it right now. And I have two of them. And until they actually come out with a 42 megapixel camera that is actually going to improve my image quality, I'm going to keep rocking my A7R 2 Hey, turn up. All right, let's go. Sorry that that took a while, but I missed your questions. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to catch up. Give me a second. Uh, yes, crop sensor. Da, 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 da. I'll tell the majority of portrait work. Okay, here we go. Do you strictly use Photoshop and Lightroom? Yes, I do. I put. I normally my workflow is I normally always edit in Lightroom first. I mess with my lighting, make sure everything is good, and then I um, transfer it to uh, Photoshop. I don't use um, Capture One. I don't use all that other stuff. I'm good with what I use um, and everything. So. Uh, let me see. I love your videos. Please, please keep it coming. Thank you. I really appreciate that a lot, Jacqueline. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. What, what do you think about the 7200 Tamron for Sony? So I had the 7200 Tamron uh, when I shot Canon. If you're talking about the Canon version, when I tried to adapt my 7200 on a Sony camera, I had so many problems. So if Tamron comes out with a Sony 7200, which is what I'm hearing, Cam Tamron is... is cooking up a 70 to 200 2.8 Sony email I can't know I don't know but I've never had a problem with Tamron Tamron is a great company and if they can really nail that email Sony and make it compatible with all of Sony's features like eye autofocus and and manual focus and everything else that we have it's, it's going to be hard there I think they're probably going to lose money on the G master because there's going to be another option uh, for Sony so that's gonna be interesting man I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're gonna do with that uh, let me see here the 7200 is a Nikon should I sell it I would sell that 70 to 200 Nikon because I don't know if it is compatible with all of Sony's features 
that's the thing about adapting lenses guys if you when i had when i went from canon and went to sony i sold all i used i adapted a lot of my gear for a long time with the mc11 adapter but uh i went full native because i noticed that my my adapter struggle in low light so when it gets like really nighttime because i like doing nighttime shooting also that adapter kind of struggles a little bit so you got to watch out for that too when you're adapting it works out it works for a while it works good but you know you can hear the motor when you're doing video um and a lot of other things that i just didn't like after a while so i sold everything and went um i went um native so yep that's my thing on that you should do a photo out let me see god to send kids to is it just me or do the OEM Sony lens caps love to pop up there? <laughs> oh, you might not be screwing that thing down far enough, bro. Uh, I shot with the A7, the A7 III, but I uh, keep the artist's calling name strictly portraits. That's good. Do you think there's a noticeable difference in megapixel when viewing the images? Um, if you're shooting with the A7R 3 or 2, um, I notice a difference because I have a 24 megapixel and I have a 42. And the 42 megapixel is sharper because the pixels are more condensed, so you get a little bit more of a sharper image. I can tell the difference in my A7R2 and my A7 III. Um, so I can notice a difference. Can you probably notice a difference or your clients? Probably not. So I really wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, let me see here. Did you go to school for photography? No. I am self-taught. I've been shooting for about five years now um everything i learned i learned from videos and i just basically put my mind to everything and learn everything myself from editing to natural light to lighting to flash to everything about photography i wanted to be a very very versatile photographer all right i didn't just want to go out there and just take pictures i wanted to learn flash i wanted to learn how flash behaves on different skin tones did you know that there's a difference there's a difference between shooting somebody who has a light color skin tone and a dark color skin tone. You get harsh lighting in, the, in areas of one person that you don't in another person. Those are things that you have to learn over time. Um, lighting, knowing how to backlight your subject, knowing how to front light your subject. Um, framing, framing, composition, um, editing. I wanted to learn everything from the head to toe about how to be a great photographer and make yourself competitive in photographer world. So my advice to you is to be competitive and to get people to want to work with you without you having to reach out to models and people all the time, make your work competitive. That means that you have to, that means that you need to do some work. That means that you need to learn lighting, learn flash, learn editing, learn composition, learn posing, learn everything. These are traits that People like us have to learn in order to do what we do. So every time we take a shot, there's a thousand things going. When, I, when I'm about to take a shot, there is so many things that go through my mind. And I'm going to tell you guys straight up. There's a lot of things that go through my mind on every shot that I take. When I'm standing here with my camera, the first thing I'm looking at is framing. Is she properly framed in the, in the camera? And then I'm looking at my composition. I'm looking at lighting. I'm looking at where my... Where my, um, where my stand is, where my flash stand is. I'm looking at where my soft box is. I'm looking at where the sun is. Do I need a second light? Do I need a rim light? Is she popping out of the picture? Am I compressing her a lot? There's a lot of things that go through my mind on just one shot. Um, and it's not, it's not anything. It's just that you want it to be a good shot. And when you start to learn a lot of things, you're gonna to start to think these things too. How is she posing? Is there a better way I could do this pose? How can I make this pose more aggressive? How can I make this pose more, more sensual, more cash, all kinds of different things. So make yourself a competitive photographer. Don't just be, don't just be a photographer, all right? Learn different areas of photography to make yourself a better now photographer. I'm telling you, it's gonna go a long way with you. Uh, let's see, what else you got? Boom. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, I'm scrolling. Hey, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. All right, here we go. If I get the 90 millimeter macro, I don't see a point in getting the 85. That is not true. <laughs> the 90 millimeter macro 2.8 versus the 85 1.8 is two different lenses. It really, really is. 
the 90 millimeter they say is not really made for porches but i i did a shoot with it and those pictures was phenomenal uh but that is a lot of light between 1.8 and 2.8 i mean you're talking about five six stops of light um so yeah it is a big difference but uh everything in your bag and you know what i'm gonna come back to that question everything in your bag should have a purpose my 90 millimeter macro has a purpose it's normally ma it's just macro work really right now because i have other other lenses that are my portrait lenses so i'm going to come back to that in just a second uh whole comes out to 7200 i think they will the difference between showing and printed images i got the a7r2 with the sony grip 1250 bro 1250 yo that is a steal uh winning have you tried uh, your sigma e-mount lenses on the a7r2 is so how accurate this focuses for eye detection the sigma yes i mean my sigma is right here i mean i and i got one right there this is e-mount the focusing um on the 105 14 is amazing it's fast it's sharp it's 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 is everything it's everything that i wanted that i hope sigma would do it's not laggy um the focusing even in auto continuous focusing when i was actually tracking my subject even today um it was tracking very very well the eye auto focus was tracking very very well um so it's i was i was kind of skeptical at first but i i had to have the 105 14 because it's the perfect focal length and it's a 1.4 my god i had to have it so sorry uh, let's see here. Adapters are bad news for lenses working. <laughs> All right. Would you love to come to one of your photo shoots in the 7? I'm in the 757. Yo, just drop me a line. If you're in 757, if you're in Virginia Beach, if you're on the East Coast with me, yo, come to my city. You know, we, we rock here all the time. So I hope to see you. Uh, I'm selling my Nikon D7200, 72.8. That's good. It's an offer up out of... <laughs> That's right. I know, right? Uh, do you use... Uh, in camera noise reduction no I don't I turn it off I don't use in camera noise reduction uh, do you prefer zoom or prime lenses I prefer my 70 to 200 for zoom um, and the only other zoom that I have is my 12 to 24 uh, G because it's an ultra wide angle lens other than that everything else is primes I, I prefer primes over zoom lenses any day any day uh, let's see here just over a year old. Do you prefer the da, da, da? Uh, Let's see here. All right, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Uh, thank you for passing. No, no problem, man. That's hey, that's what I'm here for, man. That's why I'm here with you guys right now. Uh, let me see your videos post. Where do you get your? Where do I get my music? That's one thing that everybody keeps telling me. I'm not telling you where I get my music because I want to make sure my music keeps you guys into it. I want to make sure my music keeps you guys live. That's why I like my channel so much because I feel that my channel is totally different. From everybody else's i like the music i like keeping you guys into it um and i like showing you guys a real behind the scenes photo shoot so but i'm not telling you where i get my music sorry that's the only thing i can share uh let's see here when you shoot on location do you get permission um i do get permission i do go and talk try to talk to the people beforehand um but a lot of places around here know me they know my work so when they see me come they just say how are you doing um, I don't mess with anybody. Uh, we stay out of the way of everybody, even if it's during business hours. So, um, but yes, I always do permission. I always ask just in case there's any problems. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Thanks for all your advice given to us. I'm self-taught. I learned from Jason. I've seen all your videos. No problem, man. Absolutely. I'm trying to learn all right now. There is so much stuff. Thanks for <laughs> there is a lot of photography. It, there is a lot. Uh, do you use any Magma products? So, I do not use Magma. Um, I don't have a problem with Magma. I don't shoot that many weddings, but I hope for my weddings to pick up. And if my if my weddings pick up, I will start to invest more in Magma system. But right now, no, I don't use Magma. Um, I have the A7 II. Should I upgrade? So there is a big difference between the A7 II and the A7 III. That is a big difference. From going from the A7R2 to the A7R3, absolutely not a big difference. But going from the A7 II to the A7 III, I recommend absolutely yes. The A7 III is the best selling, the best camera on the planet right now, hands down. Period, point blank. So, yes, I do recommend you get the A7 III. Um, the focusing on it is like a, it's like a baby A9. 
dual card slot, joystick, touchscreen. I mean, that camera is going to be around for a very, very long time. So if you invest in the a7 III, you probably won't need to invest in another camera for a very long time. So uh, let me see here. What kind of... Oh, I'm going up. Hold on, hold on. I'm going, I'm going. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> what kind of light is on your left? Show me. Uh, it is the aperture. Uh, it's the aperture lens. Um, it's the aperture. It's the LED. So aperture sent me to that. Aperture sent me to it. Um, it's one of the, it's the LED that I'm using in my first video that is going to be coming on the 105 here soon. So you'll see it. Uh, let's see here. Did you ever do a post processing video? No, I did not. Sorry. Crazy how Canon and Nikon came out with but they can't come close to Sony. Uh, so let's talk about that. The Canon, uh, the Canon um, EOS R and the Nikon Z6 and Z7. So what's up with all the can the mirrorless wars right now? Well, everybody knows that. Nikon and Canon had to come out with mirrorless cameras to basically stay afloat and to basically stay competitive um, in this mirrorless age because mirrorless is actually the way it's mirrorless is the way to go. Um, I think Nikon did a really good job with the Z7 and Z6. They have a, a short version and they have the the full frame version and a really good version in the Z7. That 45 meg, it's like a D850 only mirrorless. Um, it hit on a lot of things and the electronic viewfinder on it is really pretty really good from what I see um, it, But it doesn't have eye autofocus. So I really think that's where they Dropped the ball at I don't know if that's really patented it But I think that's where they dropped the ball at not including the eye autofocus. That's the eye autofocus is something that's just off the chain um, Canon like I said, they came out with only their lowest version right now. So we have to wait and see what Canon comes out with with their next um, pro body uh, mirrorless system. So I'm still waiting. I'm not going to judge Canon right, Canon right now for the version that they did come out with right now. I think it's decent. You know, it's a decent mirrorless camera. It's better than that M6 that they have. That's for sure. Um, but we got to wait and see what the pro version is. Uh, let me see here. I know you get a boo. I feel you. <laughs> All right, let's see here. What else you got? Thanks for letting me be for sharing out this. Oh, absolutely. Where can I send pictures for you to critique? Um, send them to my Instagram or my Facebook. Uh, what field of photography do you best income? Modeling, wedding. My weddings is always, my weddings is the money maker. <laughs> so uh, my weddings, man, are, my weddings do good. Weddings do really good. Um, so, but if I, I shoot a lot of models. So, whatever. But weddings is it. Uh, Magmod is overpriced. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, great advice. Can you share knowledge on editing? Um, well, you have to let me know what you want to know about editing. Tell me, tell me something that you want to know about editing. I'll try to answer for you. Uh, then nice to have the system. Absolutely. How long have you been in photography? Five years now. I've been shooting for five years now. Um, A7 III or A7 R2? A7 III. I love my A7 R2, but if I had the choice... If I had to pick one, I would get the a7 III. Um, even though the a7R2 is a 42 megapixel, you're not really going to use that 42 megapixels unless you're blowing your pictures up and you can spread those, um, you know, those megapixels. That's really where that 42 megapixels shine at. But other than that, get the a7 III all day. Best landscape lens for for Sony, <clears throat> the uh, the 12 to 24 G, absolutely ultra wide angle lens. <clears throat> 12 to 24 G is the best um, landscape lens that um, I've used. Um, it's absolutely it's the f4. It's great. Love my a7 III. I know it's awesome. Did you check the full the the Fuji specs? The Fuji specs. Are you talking about on the X23, the one they just came out with? If you're talking about that one, no, I haven't checked on the X23. I haven't really looked into it now. I, I've been keeping up with Fuji also, but I haven't checked the X3 yet. X23. Uh, let me see here what it best light kit for a starting photographer about one to two people um are you talking about like including like a soft box or like taking portraits are you talking about like taking portraits like outside in studio uh let me know what you're talking about um but no eye autofocus canon won't focus in the dark yep no eye autofocus sony wins again sorry eye autofocus is not patent canon put it in the new their new scan unless they did 
Canon did put the eye out of focus. If you guys haven't saw it, there is a video where it's actually focusing on the eyes. Now, I don't know if it does that automatically or if you can actually press a button for that. But yes, I did see that eye autofocus with the new EOS R. If you haven't, guys haven't checked it out. Uh, let me see. X-T3. Yep. I haven't saw the specs on the X-T3 yet. What software do you use for post-processing? Lightroom and Photoshop. All day. Boom. I missed the answer about upgrading from the A7 to A7 III. Absolutely upgrade. Upgrade all day. I will upgrade to the A from the A7 to the A7 III. Uh, I picked up the 8600 Pro. Can you do more videos using that in HSS outside? Mainly, all, all my latest videos have been done with um, the 8600 Pro. Um, but I will do more videos where I will actually focus on it and tell you guys about it more if you want to see that video. Um, but yeah. All my pretty much all my videos have been done with that in high speed sync. I'm normally always shooting in high speed sync unless it's really really cloudy or um, or if it's nighttime. So do it later on the video subtitle so I can watch the translation. <laughs> what translation? Why would you why would you need translation, bro? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me just know those language well, thank you. Oh, okay, okay. You don't know the language. Got gotcha. you. I got you, bro. Sorry. Do you use that button focusing? No. I hate that button focusing. I think it's overrated. I don't think you need that button focusing. You don't need that. Uh, Mac or PC? <laughs> PC all day, baby. I'm not a Mac person. If you don't know anything else about me, I do not like Macs. I don't like Macs. I am a Windows person. I am more familiar with Windows. Sorry. Uh, I saw the video and it doesn't focus in the dark. Plus lenses will suck, but you can use adapters. Uh, let me see here. Oh, you saw. Oh, you're talking about the EOS R. You saw the video on the EOS R. Um, okay. Yeah, I real. I I only know that it was able to do that, but I don't know. I didn't see it in dark and everything. So we got to check that out. Um, I'm late to the live stream. Was that Sigma? Was that the Sigma? Yes, it is a Sigma. This thing is like, it's like curling, look. God, dog. I'm glad I'm a big guy, so it don't really affect me. But here, here you go. Focus. There you go. There is focus. You got it? You got it? All right, cool. There it is. That is, oh God, that is the, um, the 105. Eye autofocus, yes. For those, let me see. For those who have the 8200, 400, 8600 Pro, you can now adjust the exposure output once in increments with the firmware update. Okay, will not work with the shoe mount flashes. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, I haven't checked that update, but I guess I need to update my 8600 and my 200, huh? I do. Bad buff focus is continuous focus for, okay, cool, nice. Um, not portrait photography. Yep. What's up, James? Oof. Can you name the best three lenses for the A7 III for portraits? I just switched over. Ooh, here's a good one. So, the best three lenses. You know what? Actually, hmm. Hmm. What's the best three lenses? Hold on. Okay, so, the best three lenses. Since I got my 105, I'm not going to include the 85. So, the best three lenses for portraits, I'm going to say, starting from the bottom, is the 35mm 1.4. 35mm 1.4. Uh, the 105. 105 1.4. And the 70 to 200 2.8. Those are my main three. I will use those three for video. I mean, I'm sorry, for portraits. Best portrait lenses. Now, before I got my 105, I would have told you, like, the 5518 is a great portrait lens. Uh, the 8518 that I use a lot is a great portrait lens. But this, the best portrait lens I have ever used. Unbelievable. So, everything is, like, out the water for me now. Because that's the only lens that really I need, man. That thing is just, it's phenomenal. It does everything. So, I'm going to be using it, like, all the time. So, let me see here. 
Frequency separation. Yes. I love frequency separation. That's my thing, man. I love it. 85, 55, and 135. 55. Well, who? Hey, Mal, who has a 5514? Is it something I don't know? Because I don't know anything about a 5514. So you let me know about that. Uh, let me see again. Thanks for adding best three lenses. Yep. <clears throat> I have all of those. So what does my bag include right now? All right. Well, starting from the lowest numbers, I have the 12 to 24 G, which is an ultra wide angle. I have the 20 millimeter 14 Sigma, 20 millimeter 14. I have the 35 millimeter 14. I have the 55 millimeter 18. I have the 85 millimeter 1.8. I have the 90 millimeter 2.8. I have the 105 millimeter 1.4, and I have the 70 to 200 2.8. And of course, I also have the 16 millimeter 1.4, which is what I'm recording you on right now. So I have about, I got a lot of Sony glass. <laughs> I got a lot of glass, bro. I really, really do. I got a lot of glass, and those are not rented. Those are all mine. So, just let you know. Uh, that's what I should do. What's in, what's in a bag video? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, and that's an A mount though, right? That 5514, I think that's an A mount. Uh, do you do you want a tutorial on price all day shooting and post editing? Yes. Do you do one on one? Oh, do I do one on one? Yes. I even do um I even do one on one through uh, webcam stuff. It's another service that I provide for people. For so, yes, I do one on one also. Uh, it would be dope to know if um, and and if I like just naming your video. That would be good to do a one algorithm because I'm seeing people with 1,000 subscribers and get like 20,000 views. <laughs> military pay, huh? We gonna leave that out of here, Stephen. <laughs> yes, I am still military. Yes, absolutely. 13 years. If you guys don't know, yes, I am active duty. Um, I've been in the Navy now 13 years, so now you learn something else new about me if you guys didn't know. Ha! Uh, let's see here. What else you got? Uh, it's Canon Nikon out. Yep. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Uh, where should I hit you up for a tutorial? Hit me on my Facebook or my Instagram, all right? That's where you hit me at. Uh, you pick up cheap? No, I did not pick up cheap. I'm not up for it yet. I'll be up for it next year. Uh, thank you for your service. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate that. So... We're not gonna get keep into that. All right, so let me see. I did army pickups. Army. Oh man, that is amazing. That is great, bro. Let me see what else. Yep. What options do you use in Photoshop when you save your images and make your images return their retain their quality? Um. Well, the first thing I do is I reduce the aspect ratio. Um, I usually um, reduce it to like 2560 by 1440, which is HD, which is perfect for, which is what you're actually supposed to use for like uploading to the web, like Instagram, Facebook and stuff. So that's one of my tips for you guys. If you guys didn't know before you, when you go into Photoshop, when you finish editing your stuff in Photoshop, um, change the aspect ratio, or change the lift to 2560 by 1440 so you can keep that sharpness um, in your images when you upload to the web now also make sure it's 300 dpi all right so you can keep your megapixels and things also um so that's one of the biggest things that i do 2560 by 1440 and 300 dpi make sure your settings and everything is right all right that's my that's my thing to you that was free that was free uh let's see here what else you know everyone love you Hey, appreciate it, man. Good night, good night. It's on Navy D. What do you think about going NYFW? I don't know. Oh, New York Fashion Week. I don't think I'm going to get up there. Can we get an Army Navy shoot? They never come here. They never come to Virginia, man. I have to. You got to go to like um uh up in Maryland, wherever that Maryland. Uh, yeah, that place up there. I can't remember right now. It's dope just being around all the creativity in the city around the time. It is. What is Newlywed? Awesome. Great work. Greetings from Brazil, Duval. Good job. Awesome, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, so um, the on-location challenge. All right, if you guys saw my last video, um, I put a challenge out to everybody in the entire world. All right? 
So every month, as you guys know, I like to go out on any location. I don't care where it is. I go out, I take my model, and we use the you know ambient light, no light. We don't take any lighting. We take one camera body and we take one lens and we go to locations and we just and we do, shoot and I have somebody come in and record it um, and I love it because it really challenges you as a photographer. I like going to random places because I like going in a place and I'm like, okay, how can I make this? How can I make this just a great shoot? So now I've started letting you guys pick the location. So you guys need to check out that last video. Um, but you know, for the month of September. We are doing a Home Depot challenge. That's what you guys voted on. Now, I've already seen two pictures that people have sent me from them doing their Home Depot challenge already. All right. So everybody goes in and then near the end of September, um, I'm, we're going to all look at the pictures. You know, I'm going to have a couple people. We're going to look at the pictures. Then we're going to pick a winner. So somebody's going to get like a shirt. Somebody's going to probably make it maybe get like a plaque or some type of giveaway. I don't know. We're going to try to do it, but and quit trying to do everything right now. But as the months go on, I really want these challenges to get. I really want everybody to really get in on these challenges. Um, I want to really be able to get some prizes and get some things. I think it's going to be awesome. It's a really, a really good way to join the community together and everybody um, participate. So now you guys just got to take a few pictures. I got to do a whole video. So you guys got it easy. All right, I'm going to walk in these places. I'm going to do a whole whole video. So I think I'm going to do my Home Depot challenge next week. I'm going to take my model, get my cameraman, and we're going to go on Home Depot and we're going to do it. So um, next month, I don't know what we're doing for October. As you know, it's like Halloween. There's like a lot of places. Everybody's already talking about going into like a scary store or something and doing like a video inside there. So. I really hope to get this on location challenge thing every month. I really hope to make it really, really big. So I really need you guys to like spread the word, start participating, man. Because like I said, it's just one of the things that professionals like myself are doing to help you guys out and to really join the community. So I hope you guys really enjoy that. Uh, let's see here. Home Depot location shoot. Yeah, Home Depot. Find you a Home Depot, get you a model. You got to, and all the directions on how to do it is in the video that I just posted. There's no, don't take no lighting. You can only use the ambient light in the store. You can only take one lens and one camera body. So now you guys know what lens I'm taking at Home Depot, right? Now, I don't know if I'm going to take this lens because they're probably going to be looking at me like, what the hell is that? Oh, and this lens is not that big, bro. Listen, this is the lens hood. This is actually how big it is. I'm waiting for the camera to focus. No, well, whatever. It's not going to focus. It's still focused on me. Whatever. It's not going to focus. So anyway, but this is how big it is, really. Yes, this is the email. There is no adapter. This is the email. It's the email, no adapter. So, that's without the lens hood. You got that, and then there's this little screw right here that actually screws it down. Like that. Boom. Got it? All right, there you go. I'm still waiting for my hat. Yo, hit me up, man. I got, I got hats, see? I got a lot of different type of hats now. Good. Uh, let me see. How does the Home Depot feel about taking pictures? You got to just go in, man. Honestly, I'm just going to walk in. I'm just going to get away from everybody. <laughs> and I'm just going to do the shoot. I mean, honestly, I'm just going to move around. I mean, we're going to try to stay inconspicuous. We're going to try to stay inconspicuous. But I can't go into Home Depot with this because this does not look inconspicuous. So it's like a damn cannon. I look like I got a gun. So I think I'm going to take my 85-18. And we're going to be good. So, uh, let's see here. What's up with that merch? What the hell are you talking about on the merch? Oh, the merchandise. Oh, all my stuff, man. I got a lot of stuff right now um, going out, bro. So, um, shirts, hats. If you guys are interested, man, you just got to hit me up. If you guys are interested, just hit me up. Um, I'm trying to put this brand really together, you know. And this is something that I've been working on. 
Um, my website is going to be coming up soon. If you guys don't know, my website is brandoncodephotography.net. But it's not up yet and it's not active yet because I'm still working on it. So pray for me that I can get that thing up and running and that'll be another way to communicate with you guys. All right. Is it possible to make natural light look as though it was lit with a strobe without lots of reflecting? Absolutely. Absolutely. But again, that's going to come from editing and that's going to come from posing, composition. Um, but yeah, I've seen plenty of natural light shots that look like they was lit. Um, if you check my Instagram or my Facebook, I posted a natural light shoot shot with that 105 today. And some people thought I actually used a strobe, but it was just natural light also. So check it out. Abandoning building somewhere for Halloween. But it has to be, uh, you can do a abandoned building, but it has to be somewhere where everybody like in the world possibly can go. So you just can't say a Ben and Bill because then everybody got to look for one. But everybody should have a Home Depot. So you got to be something like that. Uh, best camera store in Taiwan. There is no camera store in Taiwan. You, you, do you know I was actually approached by somebody about me opening up a camera store here in Virginia Beach, Taiwan area? Because there is no camera store. So one of my business ventures that I'm trying to do is open up a really good camera store. Kind of something like a Sammy's or like an Adorama or somewhere like that. I want to open up a camera store in, you know, in the Virginia area because there is, you know, there is not one camera store around here, really. So that's one. That's another business venture that I'm looking into opening up a camera store. So pray for me on that one also. Uh, let me see here. Uh, shit still big. <laughs> he said it's stay. It still look big, right? <laughs> He's so stupid. That's what she said, Lord. What strobe do you suggest? Uh, what strobes do I suggest? Well, if you're just getting into um, flash, I would say go with the 8200s. Um, I would say get one. Well, actually, I promise you, honestly, I would say get two. If I, if I was to get into flash for the first time, I would say get two 8200s and get the ADB2 adapter. Um, the 8200 is the most versatile um, off-camera flash that is pretty much out right now. I love it. Um, because you can use them in conjunction with each other and make 400 watts of light or you can break them apart and use one as a main light and one as a rim light or a key light or a fill light for that matter um, and it's still really powerful the uh, 8200 is like three speed lights you know for the amount of power so if you're getting into flash get I would say good jump right in and get two 8200s um, because like I said, they're, the versatility of them cannot be beat and they're still really powerful to overpower the sun, you know, by themselves. but together you should have no issues. Um, but when you want to actually learn, when you actually start to learn two light setup, three light setups, you can break them apart, use them on the same trigger, use them on the same trigger and, and create some really amazing shots. That's why the 8200 is still the best that I think. I'm sorry. It is. Possible. There you go. Uh, this is only DC and Buckman. They're scarce. Yep. Emerse Commerce Store. Can you give my son a shout out? He's in Kings Bay, Georgia. And he's a he's a master at all. Oh, he's an MA. And they just got married this year. His name is also Stephen Kelhorn Jr. Oh, shoot. Hey, well, shout out to Stephen Kelhorn Jr. All right. Congratulations on your newlyweds, man. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, stop by my channel and check out my stuff. Hopefully you guys get into photography. Hopefully you guys had a good photographer at your wedding because that Steven, your daddy, didn't tell me that they had a photographer. Otherwise, I would have flew out there and helped you guys out. But since Steven Kelgorn Sr. didn't say nothing since he wants to come in my chat and tell me to get a shout out to you, I'm going to put him on blast because he should have made sure you had the best photographer for your wedding. So since he didn't do that, shame on you. But... Congratulations. All right. How many 8200s do you have? I have two 8200s. Uh, yep, right over there. Uh, let's see here. You ever feel like you need the 8600 with two 8200s and the ADB2 adapter? Cleghorn, whatever. Yeah, I know. You ever feel like you need the 8600 with... Yes, I do. So, there, as you guys know, I do a lot of flash. So sometimes I might use my 8600 as my main light 
because it's the most powerful. But then I might want to use a three light setup where I need to do a really good rim light. Maybe a shoulder light right here, shoulder light right here. And if I'm shooting on location, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm either going to use my 8600 as my main light and I can put my 8200s together and use them as a good rim light from a distance or I can break them apart and really use them as like a really shoulder light on both sides to separate my model from the background. So I use them both. It really just depends on what the setup is. It depends on the composition. It depends on where I'm shooting at. It depends on a lot. But those are the type of things that you have to think about in this photography game as you get more versatile with flash and lighting. So, uh, let me see. If I have the 8600 Pro, would you see any reason to get the 8400? No. Everybody keeps asking me that. No. I do not recommend you get the 8400. I don't think you need it. I think it is a waste of money. Why do I think the 8400 is a waste of money? Because that from what I understand right now, they did not come out with a manual version. So you're only buying the Pro TTL version of the 8400, which right now is like $648. You know what I could do with $648 in flash? I would rather get two 8200s for less the price with the ADB2 adapter and again, use them as 400 watts of power or break them apart and use them as separate lights, which will give you a more versatile look and still give you pretty much the same amount of power. And also the modeling lamp, the modeling lamp with the ADB2 adapter is super strong, super bright. So I do not recommend the 8600, um, 400. There is no situation on earth right now where I can tell you where the 8600, I'm where the AD400 would be better than the 200s or the 600. None. If you can think of a situation where you think the AD400 would be better than the 600 or the four of uh, the two 200s, absolutely let me know and we can talk about it right now. But there is not a situation. And for the price, it's $648. That's crazy man come on enjoy your work do you travel i am about to start traveling the first place that i'm going to october 5th i plan on going up to new jersey um i'm going up to jersey city jersey to work with some photographers up there hopefully go to do a photo walk um collaborate with some photographers in jersey city so that's my first travel place but i plan on going out and traveling and going doing collaborations with photographers around now that, that's what i really want to do i really want to get out there and work with people um who see me a lot who follow me um and you know go out and help out so jersey is first so you mispronounced the name click horn okay sorry enjoy your listen where can i buy the light modifier for it depends on what modifier you want for your 600 <laughs> There's a, so many modifiers, man. I can't really tell you. I have so many modifiers. It really just depends on your shooting and what you want. Uh, do you use the cloth backdrops or a placer? I use, I use the um, Savage, Seamless Savage paper backdrops. Um, I have one of those, and I have a few cloth ones, um, and I have one, a vinyl one. I have different, I have different ones. Um, are you going to Photo Plus? I'm probably not going to go to Photo Plus because I'm working to go to WPPI next year. So I might have to skip Photo Plus and Photo Kina, uh, Photo Kina to go to WPPI. That's what I really want to go to is WPPI. Uh, let me see. I don't have a open box. Exactly. I would rather get 600 watts than 400 watts, right? And it's TTL. 412. Will you be attending WPPI? Yep, that's what I was just saying. I'm trying to go there. Uh, you should travel to Jamaica. Whoa, I would love to travel to Jamaica. Please send me a ticket. Let me see. <laughs> What's the best way to learn how to direct somebody on posing who has never posed before? The best way to direct somebody on posing who has never posed before. The first thing you need to do is break the ice. You need to tell, I'm, I'm being dead serious with you guys. I just did a video for you guys on working with somebody who has never posed. You guys can go check it out. I did that video for you guys. The first thing that you guys need to do is break the ice. You need to tell jokes. You need to laugh. You need to find out what that person's like. You really need to get inside their head. 
I have a really good relationship with, with my models. So I try to, you know, establish a really playful or really fit friendly or really, you know, um, open environment because the more we collaborate, the more we start feeling each other, the better the shots are going to be, the better she's going to trust me um, to pose her. So the first thing you need to do is honestly is break the ice. On top of that, after you do that and after you guys have this, you know, little hee hee ha ha thing going on, I mean, dead serious. Um, you need to think outside the box. Here's the thing with posing. A lot of models cannot sit there and just pose for a whole photo shoot for like a whole hour, hour and a half. You can't you can't rely on a model to pose for that long. It's way too long for a model to just sit there and pose to think of. A lot of different poses and looks for you you're the photographer you have to create those type of aggressive type poses for your model so it's on you to pose it's mainly on you to pose your model all right so my advice to you would just be to go out start looking at poses start seeing what other poses are go to like Instagram go to like you know my Instagram other photographers Instagram and start checking out poses and really start like putting those poses together when you're out there on location. You can't go on location and open up a book and be like, hey, he just did this pose. Let's try this. Okay, let's try this pose. That doesn't seem professional. You you gotta you gotta have it when you go into the photo shoot, man. You gotta have this together. You know, you gotta study. If if this is your craft, you have to you have to own your craft. You have to own this, man. You have to study it. Just like taking a test. You know, because I mean, what if you went to a photo shoot and I'm the model and you're like, hold on, let me try this. Let's look online and see if we can figure out some poses, you know, and then you like, I'm going to be looking at you like, like, really? You got to you got to own it, man. You got to close that book and think outside the box, bro. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. I think Trump is. What the hell is wrong with you? Most Sony can stop down at him. Is it mandatory? Do it. It's like I saw a message. It is not mandatory to stop down your aperture when you're out. A lot of times, stopping down your aperture makes for a much, not much, but makes for a sharper image because you're closing down the aperture, so you're letting less light into your sensor, so your images are going to come out just a little tad sharper because it's not, it's not taking in the whole shallow depth of field. Um, you're, you're closing it down. You're stopping it down. Um, I don't really... There's only certain instances where I stop my aperture down, and that's really if I'm trying to um, bring some things into focus or go for a certain particular shot. But no, we don't always stop our aperture down. No. Uh, let's see here. What else you got? Do you really see a difference in your 42 megapixels versus the 40? It is. I can. I can tell the difference. It's not a huge difference, but anybody who shot with a 42 megapixel and a 24. Um, you can definitely tell, especially when you start to print your work and blow your work up. You can definitely tell the difference. I have started printing my work. I recommend all of you guys go and start printing your work. It will, it's amazing. I like printing my work. Uh, so what else you got? Do you use a beauty dish for your portraits? Um, I do use a beauty dish. I don't use it for all my portraits because I have like a 36 inch. I have a 38 inch, I have 40s, 48, 60 inches, I have beauty dishes. It really just depends on the look that I'm trying to get. If I'm trying to get something really pop, punchy and contrasty, if I really want to just, you know, hard edges, I use my beauty dish. But if I really want nice, soft light, I will use either a deep parabolic or a larger soft box to make sure that the light coming out is as soft as I can get it. So I'm normally using either a deep parabolic or a, a larger soft box to make my light um, softer. So again, that's only that's all about knowing your soft boxes, what their capabilities are, and how it performs on your subjects. That's that's just knowledge, honestly. Um, true. Uh, what's an alternate to a C stand? Um, an alternate to a C stand is a cheaper C stand. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cheaper C stand. There's not really an alternate because the C stand is the best stand, really. Um, but you can get like the cheaper cowboy stands or something if you don't want to pay the money. Honestly, I mean newer makes a hundred percent, you know, metal. 
uh, adjustable C-stand, which is like a hundred bucks. Um, but there are some that are cheaper than that, man. So I don't know. I like the C-stand. Uh, Linko stands. Yeah, Linko makes some too. How's the Boca on the 105? They call it the Boca Master for a reason. Um, you can check one of the po one of the pictures that I just posted today from my photo shoot today, um, and check the Boca on that one. And that was shot with natural light. The Boca is absolutely amazing on the 105. It's sharp. It the shallow depth of field at 1.4 is absolutely amazing. It's crisp. Um, it's super sharp. Uh, the focusing is absolutely amazing on it. And I can't say too much. I can't say too much about this lens. Absolutely the best portrait lens I've ever used. And hopefully you saw guys saw what I was talking about the 135 today versus the 105. Big difference. Uh, let's see here. What else you got? I know about Einstein's. Yo, you he's so silly, dude. No. 24 to 70. 50, 55 millimeter 1.8. 85 millimeter 1.8. Do you think I should get the 92.8, 72.0? Woo! Man, you are doing it big. If you're shooting weddings, you should definitely have a 70 to 200 if you're shooting weddings, bro. I don't know why you're shooting weddings. Um, the 90 millimeter macro, man, you need that for like your ring shots. Like, what are you doing for your ring shots as far as like a macro lens? The 90 millimeter is the best macro lens I've ever used. So if you're not using a macro lens, what are you using for your weddings? That's what I want to know. What's your three favorite soft boxes for portraits? Woo! Well, um, recently I did use the Glow Parapop like a lot of people did uh, for a long time. I don't use my Glow Parapop no more. Do you guys know that? I don't use them no, I don't use it anymore. I use pretty much all the new um, soft boxes from Glow, the Easy Locks. So my first one that I really, really like is my Deep Parabolic. I've started to use deep parabolic soft boxes a lot because it makes the light even even softer on the skin. Um, I started using beauty dishes a lot more uh, just because of the punchy contrast look. And I started using the 48 inches um, a lot more now also because of the amount of circumference that the light has to spread before it comes out. It makes it even softer. So the 48 inch the uh 38 inch deep parabolic and the 34 inch uh beauty dish this is my three go-to salt boxes right now so yep update your shirt and wear <laughs> yo i'm gonna put the 105 on my shirt somehow i don't know how it is but i'm gonna get this 105 on the shirt watch watch when i tell you i don't ever tell you nothing that i don't do so watch watch when it comes uh, let me see here. All right, bro. 